Hello everyone, in today's video we're gonna be starting a brand new tutorial series. It's going to be a mobile survival game similar to what I was doing as my first devlog, but this time a thousand times better. You can see the finished product right now on the screen. The game will have a working inventory system, crafting system, temperature and time of day systems, ranged weapons, melee weapons, enemies like wolves and other animals, animal traps, med kits, you can get wood by chopping it down with an axe and make yourself a campfire so you're not cold, everything and more. I will divide this series into 5 videos and it's going to consist of 5 major parts. First one will be movement and attacking and we'll be doing that today. Second one will be inventory system, picking up items. The third one will be the crafting system. The fourth one will be character stats, temperature system, time system and hunger system. And for the final fifth one we'll do the weapons and enemies. Every video will contain a link to my discord where you can download scripts and also if you're a Patreon supporter you will get to download the, all of the scripts and the game project right now. Just visit my Patreon and I would be very very grateful if you can subscribe as well. I really did take a lot of time making this tutorial happen and let's jump into the tutorial. So we're gonna start with creating a 3D project in Unity. So once you're in, press right click and go 3D objects and add a plane. And we can make folders for materials, scripts, models, prefabs and we can make a grass material and make it green and drag it onto the plane. Now we can jump straight into Google and go to Mixamo.com. It's where we'll find our player. Go into characters and find any character model you find interesting. I'll choose Bryce. Download it as Unity FBX and drag it into Unity. Once you dragged it, make a prefab out of it and it's going to be all white. So let's make materials for it. I'm gonna make some reds and drag it onto his shirt, the skin color, blue for the shorts and black for the shoes and hair. Now go back and rename the main camera to just camera and then make a tag called camera and apply it to the camera. After that make an empty game object and call it player with camera. Now drag your player prefab onto the scene and rename it to player and add a player tag for him. Now drag the player and the camera into the player with camera game object and in the camera inspector change the rotation to 67 on the X, the position on the Y to 17 and the position of the Z to minus 6.6. .6. Put the projection on orthographic, the size to 4.8 and clipping planes to 60. That is it for the camera. Now we're moving on to joysticks. First we need to add a canvas and in the canvas add an image and call it joystick BG. And make him a child called joystick. Add a joystick tag and add it on the joystick BG. Make a new folder called UI and you can find online some joystick images that you like. I found some online, I changed the texture type to sprite 2D and UI, sprite mode is multiple and wrap mode is per axis and V axis repeat. Apply the changes and then press sprite editor and you should get a pop up saying that you have no 2D sprite package. Go into the package manager and find the 2D sprite in Unity registry and install it. And now we go into the sprite editor and make slices for the desired joystick. Hit apply and on the joystick BG place an image that is going to be the background. I added another image called handles and did the exactly same steps as I did with the joysticks. I added a handle on the joystick canvas image. I changed the scale of the new button so we have the background that is bigger and the joystick that the player controls smaller. And now it's finally time to start programming. In the scripts folder make a player controller script. Create a move speed variable and a reference to a character controller and an animator.
Also, we will need another script that is going to handle our behavior of controllers. We will name it mobile controller. Go into scripts again and make a mobile controller script. Add using Unity Engine UI and event systems. Also, next to the mono behavior, add eye drag handler, eye pointer up handler, eye pointer down handler. The errors are saying that we need to make interfaces for them and we will, but manually. First, let's write some variable images for the joystick BG and joystick. And also, we cannot forget about the input vector. In the start, we need to get the component of the joystick BG and the joystick. Now it's time to create those interfaces and we will start with the on pointer down. Now I suggest you copy what I'm doing. This is the joystick movement script that has been made by someone already and it's pretty common. I split it up and I suggest you to just copy it. I don't fully understand it as well, so I'm not going to try to explain to you and if you really want to learn more, you can always google it. Now we can get back to our player controller and add the components for controller, animator and the mobile controls. It's time to make our movement function. It is referenced in the update and it moves the player on the x-axis using the horizontal controls we made with the move speed. and it's the same with the Z position. And we need to check for animations as well, we check if the move vector is different than zero, if it is the player is moving so we put the move parameter to true, if it's not the player is standing still so put the move parameter to false. All that's left is to handle our character if he's moving at an angle, so we just say just rotate towards where the joystick is looking with the move speed. Now add another script called camera follow. It will be used to follow our player. We just need a public transform which will be the target and we'll add the smoothing and offset. On the start the offset is transfer position minus target position and now make this update a late update meaning it's going to be late of course and make a new vector 3. And also we need to do vector 3 lerp which linearly interpolates between two points. Go on to the player and add a character controller on it. Change the radius and height based on what your player looks like. Add a player controller script and set the speed to 3. Also go back into the player controller script and set the player controller variable to private. On the camera game object put the flare layer and the camera follow. The target is the player and smoothing just put 6. And if we launch the game we can move, yay! Now we need to add animations. Go to mix them all again and this time we'll be focused on the animations tab. Find the run animation and choose whatever you want. When you find your gem, click download and go FBX for Unity and import it to your animations folder. Now that you've imported the running animation, click it and in the animation tab, check the loop time and loop pose. Also in the rig tab, make sure the rig is set to humanoid. Check the root transform position on the Y. You can also see what the animation will look like if you just press the play button on the preview screen. Create an animator, control it and call it player AC. Go to Mixamo and find an idle animation as well. 
You can pick whatever you like. I found this one. It's pretty basic, but it'll work. Download it and import it. Make sure that in the Animations tab on the model you have the Read Write enabled as true and Legacy Blend Shape as true as well. In the Rig tab choose Humanoid and in the Animation tab for Idle check Loop Time and Loop Pose. Click Apply and go into the Player AC Animation Controller, press right click and create a state, rename it to Idile and add the Idile animation to it. After that, make another state, this time call it Move. Go to Parameters at the left here and add a bool one, call it Move. Make a transition from the idle state to the Move and the other way around. Check off exit time for both arrows. On the arrow going towards the Move one, add a condition Move and True. On the other arrow add the condition and set it to false. And don't forget to add the run animation to the motion tab on the move state. You can preview the transition of this animation here as well. We can now press play to play our game. As you can see the player is moving way too fast and it's also swaying. So to fix that we go into the running animation and we check the bake into pose on the root transform rotation. Also we can change the move speed to 0.2. Now we can play and everything is working perfectly. Now let's add the attacking button. In the imported handles file I will cut another button using the same tactic as for the movement. Once you're done with cutting your attack button, add another image to the canvas and call it button attack. Make a tag for it as well and call it butt attack. Add a sprite you made for the source image, then again adjust it in the way that it suits your game. You can look into the game tab to see how it would look like to help you. Just make sure you have the anchor of the image on the bottom right or on the position you want your attack button. Add a button component to it and for that we're gonna be back later. In the canvas we forgot to put the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Adjust the match so it fits your screen how you like. Now we need another script and name it Buttons UI. Now we make a variable for the player controller and in the start reference its game component by finding its tag. Now we just need to make the click button function so that when we press the button it will reference another function that we will have to make in the player controller script. This is just so that it's organized better and that we don't clutter the player controller that much. And also because of the animator controller that is connected with the player. So we put if the move is false you can attack. Add the button's UI script onto the canvas and add the canvas on the on click function in the button attack and find click button attack. Now we just need the animation. Head over to Mixamo again and find any animation you like. Download it, import it, do the exactly the same thing as we did for the run and idle animations. So check read write and check legacy blend shape. Set the animation type to humanoid. I changed the name to attack and checked all of the three root transforms. Preview it and it looks good. Go into player AC and add the attack state. Rename it to attack and put the animation in. Make a trigger parameter and call it attack. Make transitions from the idle to attack and the other way around. 
Chekhov has exit time for this arrow and add a condition called attack. You don't have to add anything on the other one, just hit play. And as you can see, we finally have an attacking, working as well as movement. The player can hit, run and be idle, working all fine and perfect. After this, I went out and sped up the attacking animation in Mixamo because it was just too slow. And you can do that as well just by increasing the override and import the animation again and do all of the settings too. And that is going to be for today's video and for the very first episode of this mobile survival game series. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're just as excited for the rest of the series as I am. If you can, please, please, please subscribe because it really helps me a lot. Also like, comment and check out the Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!